We're only hours away from President Trump's first State of the Union address, but not all lawmakers will be in attendance. A number of Democrats plan to boycott the speech, including Congresswoman Maxine Waters. Congresswoman Waters joins me now from the Capitol. She's a Democrat representing California's 43rd District. Good afternoon, Congresswoman. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. I want to ask you what your reason is for boycotting the president's address. Why not hear him out? Uh, I will not be attending uh, the president's State of the Union this evening uh, because I know so much about this president. I have watched him very thoroughly as he campaigned. I've spent a year uh, fighting him and his practices. Uh, he is documented, he's been documented to have told 2001 lies uh, in one year's of uh, serving uh, in this country. And so I don't trust him. Uh, I don't believe anything that he has to say. And there's no reason for me to sit there and pretend. You say you don't trust him. The White House says the speech is about unity. Is there anything he could say to you to get you back to the table? Uh, it's not anything you could say. Uh, perhaps there's something he could say uh, to this country. Uh, he certainly has not been about unity. This is a man who basically uh, sided with uh, the right wing, uh, the white supremacists and others at Charlottesville. Uh, this is a man who's been very divisive. One of the first things that he did was to have a travel ban uh, that would exclude Muslims from this country. The other thing, he called Mexicans rapists and all kinds of names, said he was going to build a wall and he was going to make Mexico pay for it. Uh, he just disparaged uh, Haiti and Africa and called them assholes. And so what do you mean when you talk about unity? He cannot make us believe in one speech that he's going to change his character. This man Man has no good values and I don't expect that he is going to change and certainly one speech uh, at the State of the Union is not going to do that. You know the president one sector of the community has been involved in the president is saying he's touting these record low unemployment rates particularly among African Americans. It's 8.6 excuse me 6.8 percent in December. That's historically low. Congresswoman I remember a point when you were critical of President Obama for not doing enough for black unemployment. What do you make of that number? Well, let me just say this. Uh, first of all, this president takes credit for everything. As a matter of fact, he goes so far as to take credit for getting North Korea and South Korea together when they actually got together around the Olympics. And so, yes, the employment rates have been steadily coming down, but still we are double the white rate. You're right. It has been coming down steadily since 2010. You were, as I mentioned, critical of President Obama for not doing enough. What more would you like to see this president do in reaching out to communities as you outlined earlier? Well, first of all, he's done nothing. Uh, this president should be about all of the people. This president should be about understanding uh, how to create opportunities for the least of these. This president should understand how important comprehensive health care and Obamacare is to the African American community. He should be investing more in education and housing. He has not talked about any of this, so there's a lot that he could do. I don't expect that he's going to do very much. You'll be giving your own response to the president's address on BET. What will your message be? Well, I'm not going to uh, preempt my message. Yes, I will be given a response, and, and I hope everyone uh, can watch it this evening. And you're one of several Democrats who are giving responses. Uh, why so many out there today? Well, it's not so many out there. When we are invited, uh, particularly by the news media, as I was invited by BET, uh, I think that's an opportunity that I should take advantage of. And so I'm pleased that there's more than one or two or three uh, for all members who have an opportunity to respond to the invitations. I think we should do that. Congresswoman, you've been serving in Congress for more than two decades. I'm sure that you'd like to flip the House see it turn democratic. What is the message that you think can resound with voters out there who didn't come to the polls last go around and might you hope show up in midterms? Well, uh, basically, I think that we are looking for a president that's a unifier. I do think that we're looking for a president 
that will represent all of the people. I think we're looking for a president who understands we have international allies and that these friends that we have developed over the years are not to be disparaged. Uh, they're not to be uh, talked about in uh, terrible ways. And I think that whether it's the domestic agenda or the international agenda, we need someone who knows and understands, have an appreciation for public policy and the Constitution. And uh, that's what we're looking for. So do you think the message is double down on resistance? with Democrats, you know, attack the president. Is that enough to flip the House? I beg your pardon, what did you say? I was just saying, do you think it's enough to sort of attack the president directly as a strategy to turn the House blue? Well, that's not what Democrats do. Uh, what we've been doing is we've been fighting. Uh, don't forget, we had to struggle for Obamacare and to keep comprehensive, uniform health care for all of the people. We're the ones who fight for housing. We're the ones who talk about the environment. This president has come along. He's talking about drilling on our beaches in California and Florida. So we know what we're fighting for. We know what we stand for. We stand for peace, and we don't like the way that he talks about North Korea, name calling the little rocket man. That's not how a credible president deals with problems. Uh, what we want, we want peace, uh, we want uh, security, we want to make sure that we have an environment where people can live safely. And so this president has represented none of that. And we're not just about being against him, we're about continuing to push the policies that are good for all of the people. Congresswoman Maxine Waters, thank you for joining us, Congresswoman. You're welcome, certainly.